Let's talk about the five worst female Nintendo characters. We're gonna start this off easy. Peach. Peach is one of the worst female Nintendo characters. Everybody knows this. The Dread, she's got the personality of an easy bake oven. She's been kidnapped literally over 37 times. Sometimes she gets kidnapped twice in the same game. Her name is actually synonymous with incompetence. The only real reason she's not lower in the list is because of the spin-off games or sometimes she tries to save herself or she's useful. That's the solace. Number four, Princess Zelda, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. The Dread? Zelda was peak kick-ass boss bitch energy as Tetra. Then what did they do? They put her in a dress, told her that she was too weak to fight, told her that she's a liability, put her in the basement of a castle, and locked her ass up. There's no hyperbole here, this is what happened. The only solace here is that she was the crux of the final battle at the end of the game. Though in that battle, I started to understand their feelings on her ability to fight. <laughs> Girl, shoot! <laughs> Number three, Kirsty. Now I know, you might be wondering, who the hell is Kirsty? It's because no one liked this game and they erased it from their memory. Kirsty is your side companion for Paper Mario Sticker Star. The dread here, she needs a kick in the ass. She's rude, not to mention she offers the most useless advice. Why couldn't Kirsty give us a hint as to what thing we were supposed to have when we go fight a boss? If you haven't played the game, you don't really know what that means, but trust me, it was quite annoying. Why did we have to go back to the main town in order to figure that out when we had a companion who could have offered some kind of hint. She's also otherwise completely forgettable. She's bad because she's boring and unlikable, much like her game. And I guess you could take solace in the fact that she does fit her setting. Number two, and I'm sorry I have to say it, Epona in Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Look, I love the game too, but Epona controls like shit. You think you're gonna jump that fence? Wrong angle. You think you're running through that field? <laughs> you didn't see that tree root blocking your giant horse? Idiot. Playing a Pona song so she can come to you, right? What's that? She's not coming. Oh, she hears you. There's just a two foot fence blocking her path. Why don't you go run to her, you little bitch? But she is the horse of legend, so she gets a pass. Number one, it's Navi from Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This isn't news. I'm not breaking anybody's brain with this, but it needed to be said. On the record, cemented. Need I say more? You know, the best part of the ending of Ocarina of Time is her leaving without so much as saying goodbye or a single acknowledgement. She just up and flies away, out the window. I like to imagine that she flies off to the Lost Woods and becomes one of those one-time use skank fairies, hiding in some underground cesspool, waiting for somebody to walk by so she can get used up and discarded like a condom. What do you think? Is there somebody here that I missed? Was I being too harsh on any of the characters? No, that, the answer is no, I wasn't. They are all terrible, but Navi's the worst specifically. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon, and long live the Turtle Kingdom.